A Kappa with Nam Tebo is proudly brought to you by Standard Bank as we celebrate International Women's Month. Good evening and welcome to yet another exciting edition of A Kappa with Nontebo, which is proudly brought to you by Standard Bank Eswadini. And obviously states the case why the studio is suddenly blue. And as we are celebrating Women's Month, we get to talk to women that inspire other people in their different fields of profession, as well as accelerating progress in those fields that they are in. And in today's episode, we are celebrating women in the creative industry. And joining us at the studio is an award-winning musician, a singer-songwriter, I'm still reading, a passionate music lecturer <laughs> who is inspiring the next generation of musicians. Valim Sini, thank you so much for joining us um, in the studio and um, on the show, A Cup Out with Nom Tebo. Thank you so much, Nom Tebo. It's my pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure having you. This <laughs> interview has been long coming. I remember the first time I got to listen to your music. I was just, uh, you know, taken away. I was so... <laughs> Pleasantly surprised, and I'm like, you know what, we're getting there. The music industry finally in Eswatini is getting somewhere, and I'm sure you're also excited to be part of it at this particular time. Absolutely, I think uh, we're definitely getting somewhere, yeah. and uh, it's a great time to be a Swazi musician. True, absolutely, yeah. True, <laughs> and uh, you know, and congratulations. Um, I do believe that um, Standard Bank Blue Shiro Award. That's you. Tell us, <laughs> you know, how does that make you feel? You know, that you've been recognized for such, you know, an inspiring award. Um, I mean, I think inspiring is the definitely the right word. Uh, I'm truly honored to be recognized. I mean, Standard Bank is, is such a huge institution. Uh, so for them to sort of single me out as being someone who's yeah. had some impact in my generation, it means mm -hmm. so much to me. And right. uh, it's not easy being a Swazi artist, mm -hmm. especially when you've you know, been working for quite a minute. Right. So it's it's very uplifting, mm -hmm. and it just reminds you to keep working harder. Yeah. Yeah. And and you know and and don't lose the passion, you know, as yeah. well, you know, while while you're working hard. Because the thing is about music, I want to believe that it's something that you really need to have in you. Yeah. It's not one of those things that you can actually go into a classroom, <laughs> sit there, and then become a Mariah Carey or a William Sen. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So that is really great. <laughs> and um, your music, you know, has managed to captivate audiences. You know for over a decade shocking <laughs> you know and you've achieved so much in your career and you've managed you know to stay relevant you know to maintain your artistic integrity while craving your own um, path so um what has been your biggest achievement so far my biggest achievement so far career wise i would say uh definitely booking bushfire twice yeah you know uh, I remember in high school, I used to attend Bushfire religiously. Yeah. How were you attending <laughs> Bushfire while you were in high school? Um, okay, late high school, you mm -hmm. know, uh, above it. But I mean, you know, with my siblings, um, yeah. daytime right. events, uh, it was very accessible. Mm -hmm. And uh, if I if I do rem remember correctly, I think Jigs used to have some kind of a student discount uh, right. in, in those time. days. Yeah. yeah, so it was very accessible to us. And it was just so tangible a dream of mine you know the stage is literally a few minutes from my house right. so it's such a tangible dream for me right. and uh i just knew that this is this is i need to achieve this dream and i've done it twice so Wonderful. for me that's thank you congratulations <laughs> tell us about that first moment that actual moment you walked onto that stage what was that like the feeling what is going through your mind you know uh you stand behind the the curtain right. backstage but you can sort of peek to the mm -hmm. audience that 
audience is huge. It's a huge <laughs> audience. And on top of that, an international audience as an well. International audience. Um, you can see artists in the, you know, you can see uh, corporates that mm -hmm. you know, um, just everybody that right. you can think of is watching in mm -hmm. that moment. And it's, it's a, such a big platform. And so you have moments of, you know, am I really ready for this? Yeah. Especially when you look behind that curtain. Uh -huh. um, but you, you step on, the music starts, and I think once the music starts, then the, what's the word, then the professional kicks in, you know? Right. All the rehearsals that I've done to mm -hmm. lead up to this moment, it all just kicks in, right. and it becomes second nature, and I, and I do what it does. Right. <laughs> you know, and um, you're not only just um, a, a musician, you've actually gone as far as um, recognizing your talent, you know, mm. and um, now you're a lecturer, you yeah. know, you are teaching music and you are creating a new generation of professional music artists. Please yeah. share that with us. How's that going for you? You know, I've been teaching for a while and uh, like I said to you earlier, um, it's, it's, it's been quite a journey. I think earlier in my career, mm -hmm. It was being an educator wasn't something that I saw for myself initially, but mm -hmm. I sort of fell into it, and with that, I had to acquire you know the skills of actually uh, teaching. You know how right. artists have a reputation of being <laughs> all over the place with admin, yeah. so I had to pull all that together and just learn some new skills mm -hmm. um, and revise what I'd learned at school because I, I I fell into education immediately after university. Right. So there's some things that I had to learn, and I'm still learning. But uh, I found the, I think I'm finding myself as an educator and mm -hmm. it's, it's really lovely to see uh, me growing in that space. Right, yeah. yeah, because that's what I wanted to ask you, you know, the, those specific aspects, you know, of your education or your artistry, you know, that you find in yourself, you know, emphasizing in um, your, your particular teaching style. I do believe you have, you know, <laughs> your own teaching style. I want us to talk more, you know, about yeah. that because our kids, you know, unfortunately this generation, that just it's one thing you know that they do best and they're and that's what they're doing mm. literally mm. so with, when it comes to your teaching style and your artistry how do you implement that um i mean i definitely am not the strictest teacher mm -hmm. on campus mm -hmm. <laughs> i think i really believe in people uh standing on their own and pushing themselves because right. if it's your passion then you know show us it's your passion mm -hmm. you don't need to be spoon-fed uh, deadlines, you don't need to be spoon fed when to practice, you know if, if this is what you want to do, mm -hmm. stand for it, right, um, so I really believe in that and I think it reflects in, in my, my style mm -hmm. uh, my students would also attest that um, I really believe as an artist, mm -hmm. you need to feed yourself, right, with, you know you need to consume uh, things of this world, I mean, you know not, not, not like art, yeah. other, other mediums of art, right. visual art, other kinds of music, mm -hmm. books you need to read, current events, you need mm -hmm. to be stayed clued up, just to have something to say. Right. Yeah, so I really believe in, in uh, consuming. So I always encourage them to consume things that you don't know, yeah. and that's going to feed the artist. And, and you know what's the funny thing? You know, those are words um, that I always um, share with, with my children. Yeah. You know, I'm like, <laughs> always doing whatever you consume, yeah. you become. Right. So it's very, very key that yeah. you're aware of what you are consuming and your surroundings. Exactly. We're going to take a quick commercial break. And <laughs> when we come back, we're going to speak more on a uh, grooming young musician and um, just talk more even about your award, you know, being a Shiro. That is a big deal, the kingdom of Eswatini. And I know there's a lot of female artists that would love to be in your position. <laughs> we'll be right back. You're watching a cup out with Nom Gebo, a special edition probably brought to you by Standard Bank Eswatini. This is such an honor and it's very humbling to have the bank be part of international 
Women's Day. We are celebrating women for the month of March. So wherever you're at home, sit next to your sister, sit next to your mom, sit next to your know, helper or another random lady. As long as they're female, you need to be celebrating those people. It's their month and we want to be spoiled. Williamson, <laughs> let's talk about the award. Okay. Standard Bank mm. is doing a lot to change people's lives, to mm. be inspirational and, you know, to be influential. So that is why they have people like you, you mm. know, that um, they choose to actually push that agenda. So what is a shiro, according to you? A shiro, according to me, is, uh, you know, I think, uh, or at least in my life, mm -hmm. the shiros that I've witnessed, usually they don't get the accolades, they don't get the the forefront but mm -hmm. it's all that work that drives everything that keeps things moving and keeps things alive in the background right the you know the, the role that a lot of women have played um that i've seen whether it be business or otherwise of mm -hmm. you know um, family they just keep the engine running right. it's, it's such a flawless execution of love mm -hmm. you know of uh, efficiency of financial yeah um What's the word I'm looking for? Yeah, uh, bit better, you know, <laughs> and, and, and saying that way, we don't care about that word. Right. You know, the financial aspect of it. And um, I think Standard Bank, you know, is doing a good job and by actually addressing the creative side, you know, mm. of, of financials. Because right. if you're a musician, you need to know your numbers because yeah. you have to be signing those contracts. You need to be able to, to you know, to charge, yeah. you know, your bushfires, you know, mm -hmm. whatever event that you need to be attending. So... How is that happening now? Our artists, are they recognized financially? Our artists, are they recognized financially? Um, I mean, you know, uh, I think it's, it's, it's a growing industry. Mm -hmm. uh, but luckily we have now um, things like Luju, mm -hmm. you know, Standard Bank Luju yes. Festival, um, where we have more opportunities to work and right. develop ourselves. Mm -hmm. And in turn, that's going to get us ready for... Uh, shows across the border right. i think we were struggling with the with the um opportunities because mm -hmm. south african artists they have you know a gig here and there and they every weekend they're working on their craft yeah. but we have to work at rehearsals yes there's not really a lot of platforms so i think financially are we recognized i think it's 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 getting better mm -hmm. but um it's a struggle still you know right. a lot of us I'm, I'm one of the more fortunate fortunate artists i would say in mm -hmm. terms of that yeah uh, i'm able to to live off my work mm -hmm. but in general as an industry i think it's very hard for for the swazi artist and we we have a lot of work to do right yeah we have a lot of work to do yeah because saying that um actually reminds me you know of all the other initiatives you know that standard bank is actually carrying out yeah. you know in the communities yes you know going out there and inspire you know that crowd that young person you know in in the actual rural communities. Mm. So what more can be done to make that an achievement? Maybe from you as an artist, what do you think would be a solution to get hold of that talented artist, you mm. know, in the, in the rural areas specifically? In the rural areas, I think it all goes back to the grassroots. Mm -hmm. I think I, I can commend government for implementing um, the mandate to have a performing arts as mm. a requirement yes. in primary school. I think that's that's one of the key things. You know, you you, you have to reach children from developmental stages right. to implant, you know, whatever talent they, you know, to to nurture whatever talent they could have mm -hmm. or the perspective. Because once we grow up, we now have sort of a divide between the artists right. and the corporates, right? But if we all grew up having that sense of the arts are really critical for, mm -hmm. for society. Right. You know, they, they reflect us and they dictate to us, mm. you know. So I think if we all grew up knowing that and valuing the arts, uh, we would be in a different place now. True. So I, I commend um, our leaders for implementing right. the arts at grassroots. Okay. And then also I think now it's just up to, you know, things like uh, royalties on radio. But that's, that's a work in progress mm -hmm. as well. So that's very commendable. Um, and I think just some, some clear support structures right. for the arts, yeah. Let's just talk about the professional side of everything as well. Yeah. Because sometimes we tend to um, think that uh, you're an artist, mm. so maybe professionalism is not important. Maybe education is not so important because mm -hmm. you have that natural gift. Yeah. You know, you're that actor, you know, that or actress or you're a musician just like you. Yeah. 
So I think in terms of education, mm -hmm. I mean, I went to university and uh, it definitely added value to me. Mm -hmm. But I think for, you don't have to go to school for mm -hmm. your art form. Right. But I think education really opens your mind uh, to certain things, you mm -hmm. know. So, you know, if you don't want to study music, but you want to be a musician, mm -hmm. maybe get a business degree. Right. So you can handle your business mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> properly. Yeah, true. Uh, properly. Because it is a business, and that's how, you know, one needs to look at it, you know, right. as an artist. Mm -hmm. And uh, being a, a shiro that you are, uh, mm -hmm. Seni, so there's a lot of work for you out there. But, look, already you are contributing a lot. You're a, you, mm -hmm. you're a lecturer, mm -hmm. you know, at Limco Gwing. And um, we, we know that that institution, you know, whatever, whoever graduates from the institution, you know, they quite, they're industry ready. Mm -hmm. and, and for you, what is your most, your biggest emphasis to your students when it comes to music? When it comes to music? Yeah, um, and the industry as well. And the industry. Okay, one of the, actually the, one of the most resounding lessons that I ever learned was from Jiggs Thorne. Uh, I like that guy. <laughs> You know, and it was, yeah. it, it, if, you, if, you, if I had missed what he said, it, it really would have slowed me down, I think, in terms of my career. He said, uh, Willem Sini, it's about relationships. Right. And I think it stuck with me because I got it. You know, in as much as you are talented, mm -hmm. in as much as you are financially boosted, mm -hmm. but you need to have relationships with people to move forward, to grow. It's, it, it's just how it works. You know, people need to know a person mm -hmm. in order to trust them with their business. Yeah. Um, so nurture relationships, network, it'll get you far. True. Yeah. And then let's just talk about the gender aspect of it, you know, okay. because, we, we, that's, you know, we never finish a conversation without, you know, throwing that element in. You know, we have our female artists and we've got our male mm -hmm. artists. How's that going? Are the women also given equal opportunities as the men? Mm. And the numbers, are they equal? Are they the same? Mm. You know, in terms of performing arts, like performing on the stage, mm. I would say we have equal opportunity as women. Um, maybe a little too, <laughs> a little too much. Uh, what okay. I mean by that is uh, I think women are left out of ownership right. in our industry. So uh -huh. we, we've been very good at, you know, grabbing the mic mm -hmm. and, you know, now grabbing some instruments. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I think in terms of the ownership, the management, the right. the ownership of the projects um, and subsequent, you know, deals that come out of that, mm -hmm. I think we're very much left out. And uh, that's something that I'm working towards, um, showing other young women that, you know, you, you, you don't, don't have to be just the the puppet in the front. No offense to the singers. <laughs> I'm a singer as well. But you can be so much more. You can yeah. Be the captain and of the ship. And speaking of the yeah. puppet, you know, with the mic, you know, and um, I, I don't know, maybe it's, the, it's uh, I think it's the 21st century. Yeah. So our um, girl children, you know, our artists, we feel we need to be slightly half naked at times. Mm -hmm. well, what do you say? Let's have that honest conversation okay. about that, you know. <laughs> because our men, you know, they're fully dressed. And we know that we, we're, as women, we, we, we love being sexy. Yeah. You know, you, we like to flaunt, you know, our beautiful mm. bodies. But oh, let's have an honest conversation. Yeah. Is that working for us? Oh, yeah. maybe I'm too old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Um, thinking, we're dressing less and less and less. Right, yeah. right. You I mean, it. yeah, definitely <laughs> growing older has something to do with it. I've noticed that in myself as well. But um, in terms of sexual expression, you know, I, I find it liberating. Right. You know, if it's who you are, do it. But I think there's a fine line between mm. getting caught up in... Uh, industry expectations and being right. exploited, yes. especially when you are, like I said, a puppet in the front and you're mm -hmm. not in charge of the ship. But if you're in charge of your image, in yeah. charge of your expression, then definitely, baby girl, show us everything. <laughs> not everything. <laughs> <laughs> right now, not everything, but do show us something. Do show us some, some. Like right now, <laughs> we are going on a quick commercial break. And when we come back, we are going to have a uh, play a little trivia. You know, ask those little questions you know, <laughs> that you've always wanted to ask. Let me say, we'll be right back. Renewal of TV licenses for 2024 is now open. Here is a quick reminder. A viewer's TV license costs 180 emalangeni per device. Other accessories such as decoders and set-top box cost 50 emalangeni per device. 
For traders and repairers, TV license costs 300 emalayeni per business area. And now, to pay your TV license, use these following methods. You can use MTN Mobile Money with the number 76222000 or dial star 007 star 3 star 7 hash or you can use Eswatini Imani. you can pay our TV license at any post office in the country. Another option is you can use any NetBank branch using our TV license account number 11990043037. Don't forget, when paying for your viewer's TV license, reference with your PIN at all times. And when paying for a retailer TV license, reference with your TIN at all times. For more information, call us on 7802-4543 or 34050163 or 34020879. And you can send us a WhatsApp message on 76222000. You're watching a kappa with Nom Tebo. We are blue because the show for the next month, as we are celebrating Women's Month, Standard Bank has done us the honors by sponsoring us, and we are so happy. Mm. You know, the whole team is excited, and the whole institution, you know, mm. it's on a TV to be recognized, you know, by Standard Bank. So, this is a big deal for us. Belim, say, what's your favorite color? My favorite color is uh, orange. Okay. Orange, it just uh, always makes me think of, you know, a nice sunset or sunrise. Uh -huh. It's optimistic, it's bright, mm -hmm. light, mm -hmm. gold, if you will. I also love a good metal, gold. Okay. Somewhere in that. <laughs> a good metal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What's your favorite, me favorite meal? My favorite meal. Oh, my gosh. Um, you know what I like? Okay. A beef stew, mm. basmati rice, mm -hmm. a big fat avocado, yes. and you're done. Yes. You're hey. done. <laughs> that sounds great. <laughs> that list, the whole team is done. It's elevating, I'm, I'm <laughs> sure. And what's the first thing you do when you wake up in the morning? When I wake up in the morning, uh, unfortunately, I grab my phone. <laughs> <laughs> You're that type. I grab my phone, yeah. And do what? Um, and just dive into the metaverse. Uh -huh. <laughs> and stay, you know, I'm looking for inspo, maybe on Pinterest. Right. For um, mm. photo shoots and, mm. uh, you know, just ideas. I'm right. listening to music and looking at like the state of the arts in my country, you know, mm -hmm. I am, uh, I am uh, one of the leaders, I'd okay. say. So, you know, I need to know what's up, what's, what's happening. happening. Yeah. yeah. And uh, growing up as a child, take us back to your childhood. Mm -hmm. That first day you broke the rules at home or broke something <laughs> and got a beating. Tell us about it. What have you done? Yeah, oh my God. You know, my mom wasn't big on beating, hey, mm -hmm. but she had this look that just sorted your whole life quickly. <laughs> that, 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 just that. Just that. She wasn't. She wasn't. Um, she wasn't a beat shame. But mm -hmm. I think also her kids weren't too rebellious. You mm -hmm. know, we're we're actually just very chilled uh -huh. as uh, as siblings in general. Yeah. yeah. Right. Mm. But I will say, <laughs> yeah, there has to be something. <laughs> there has to be something. It can't be these two um, shoes. You know those. Um, tubes for electricity when yeah. you're building those white tubes yeah why? so they had some lying around in the house maybe i was about four five and i started picking it up and playing it like an instrument you okay. know do, 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 yeah. do. gani i'm also i love to run as a child <laughs> so i started running with the pipe and i hurt myself oh my god hurt myself bad and instead of um apologizing yeah. saying gani because i know gani I, t I flipped the blame on my si all the siblings and I tell them that you see, you know, I'm going to get a lot of money. Oh my goodness, that's what you do. I mean, that's me. That's what you did. That's what I did. How did they take it? 
I mean, I was I was the, the last born very young, so yeah. it was kind of funny and more than, mm -hmm. you know. And speaking of your family, um, <laughs> I saw that beautiful music video that you shot. Uh -huh. You know, I think I believe it was your, your, your mom. Yeah. Your sisters talk about that. That was so beautiful, and I wanted to be part of your family. Because you, you do have time. those features, man. Yes, you would have fit guys, in. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Let's toast we, to that. We, we, we are sisters. Sis. We are sisters. <laughs> Tell us about that video. That is very beautiful. Thank you, sis. Um, yeah, I think I just wanted, I mean, you know, the song is Shisa, mm -hmm. and uh, it's about like a love that transcends time. Right. So I wanted to to reflect that because a mother's love is, is mm -hmm. really the ultimate. Yeah. And I always felt like um, I wanted to, to speak on that. So uh, they had to be in the video. Yeah. Because it was sort of like an ode to her. So there was mom in the video. There was mom. In fact, I wanted uh -huh. Goko right. to be there, but she wasn't well enough. So mm -hmm. she would have been... Um, the the highest matriarch. She mm -hmm. would have been the queen of that yeah. tribe that I that I envisioned, uh -huh. <laughs> but she wasn't well enough. So my my mom had to take her place. Mm -hmm. uh, I had my sister, older sister, mm -hmm. her her daughter mm -hmm. Sanzi, and then my uh, my Lomnani's daughter mm -hmm. Deliwe as well. Yeah, Lovely. so all the girls. In How the did family. that make them feel? You know, to be part of a music <laughs> video. Um, oh, and then my and brother's the wife did our makeup, so all the girls were involved. It was a family <laughs> affair, and with that, Felix, and thank you very much yeah. for for joining us in the studio, and many thanks to Standard Bank for sponsoring a Kalpa with Nomtebo. And we'd like to give you this beautiful candle because you are a shiro, oh. and we're happy that Standard Bank actually saw that you deserve, you know, that award being a Shira and the wow. wonderful work that you are doing in the music industry. And then courtesy of Eswatini Candles, these are wow. homemade. And at Eswatini, we have the talent. Be the light that you are. Oh. Take this candle and always remember your family from A Kappa with Nom Febo. Thank you so much. You are most welcome. <laughs> and with that, thank you very much for joining us um, on A Kappa with Nom Febo. Let's continue to <laughs> celebrate our women in our lives. Good night. A Kappa with Nom Table was proudly brought to you by Standard Bank as we celebrate International Women's Month.